What's up guys? Welcome to the Crypto Savvy channel. I'm Craig and we're going to be going over the charts as usual. We're going to take a look at the Dow Jones, NASDAQ, S&P, the DXY, which is pumping pretty hard right now. We're going to take a look at that, take a look at where to watch for a rejection and possibly retracement. We're going to talk about Bitcoin retracement and I'll give you my thoughts on that. Also, we're going to be taking a look at Cardano, ADA. Um, I'm going to give you my predictions on where I think that'll be. If I'm correct about this whole market structure, you're definitely going to want to stick around for this whole video. We're going to go over a lot. We're also going to take a look at the new feature for Prime XBT. Um, there is a contest you can join for totally free, so you don't have to risk your own money, and you can actually win tradable funds from it. Definitely stick around. This is going to be a good video. If that sounds good to you, make sure you take one second out smash that thumbs up leave your comments down below and let's get into it so let's start out right here with what we've been talking about the strike right on the dow if we look at what happened um over here so we had our low over here which over here is our low we could look at it as here we could look at it over here whichever let's take this low for the benefit of the doubt right F to match up with this low over here now when we had the 2008 crash, right, the 2007 UAW strike and then the 2008 crash, it dropped the Dow Jones 55%. So if we went just from this high, we'll go from this high where the uh, UAW strike started, right? Now, that's not to say everything's going to be exact. I'm just showing you how a lot of this stuff lines up. Most of you guys know I think we are in a huge everything bubble and we have much lower to go in all markets. That you don't have to agree with that, at least watch, and that way you have that opinion, and if it does happen, at least it was in your foresight as a possibility, right? So let's take a look at, if we drop the same amount, that would get the Dow Jones all the way down to approximately 19,600, 19,700 points, right? So if we go from this low down, over here, that was 10.3%. If we did that again over here, that would still get us right into that same area. So like I said, none of this is financial advice. I'm telling you guys how I look at the markets, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. You make your own mind up. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones a little bit closer. So this was the rising wedge that we've been talking about, right? We have broken down through it. The measured move doesn't mean it happens in one candle is around 27.7. This is the daily chart, right? This is just looking at it in the smaller um, view. So that is my first target. We have, if we put the fibs on here from this low to this high and look at retracement levels, right? If this is just gonna be a retracement, we passed the 0 0.236 at 34, 32.9, or 33 right in that range obviously we'll probably get a bounce off this fib if nothing else but once this fib breaks then we look for that 32.5 which is a bigger fib um, from this structure right that's the fib retracement from this so if you believe let's try to make it as simple as I can for you guys right so if you go from this low to this high this these are your retracement levels to look for and as you notice or will notice this trend line from way back here, right? From this low, we tagged it again here. And if we do it again, the 0.786 would be around that 22.1, 22.2 range, right? So if this market is only gonna go down to the median, which is right here, that is where I would expect a reversal. If that breaks, it could get even worse and this bear market could take a lot longer than even I expected. So let's take, Keep a close eye on that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be going over this a lot. All right, taking a look at S&P. S&P has got, getting it, trying to get a bounce here at the 200 EMA, but remember I had said this is the level we're watching for the rising channel. Once that breaks, then we're looking for that 37, 35 range. Obviously we can put fib retracements in there um, and look at this as a possible retracement from this uh, upward move momentum, right? But I, I, I think we're going a lot lower, guys. So just be cautious. Um, NASDAQ, we already broke down out of our rising channel. The measured move of that is around 12.5. Again, 
I think we could go a lot lower than that before the bottom hits, but this is the next main target, right? DXY is cranking. Now, if you guys have been watching, we have been, we had these targets here that you can see. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we were watching this breakout here, right? We're gonna clean up this chart. All these targets have hit. Our next target is at 106.8. Now, if we get a rejection there and a pullback, then we can expect the markets to go up a little bit um, for a little while. I don't think it'll last even if that happens. Let's take these targets off here since we already smashed them, right? And let's get this off of here. Let's get We'll keep this here because that's our fib level where if we do get rejected at this 106, then we could see it come down to here. And if that happens, the markets will most likely rally for a little bit. I don't think it'll last long, but that is what I'm looking at. Now, if we break up above this and test it for support, we don't even have to test it for support, but 99% of the time it comes back to test for support and then continue up. Then our next level to watch is going to be this EMA at 108. And then, of course, you guys know I have much, much higher targets up here, right? Um, much higher targets, right? So 115 is the target from the breakout of this falling wedge in white that you can see. And then we also have a chart target at 122 and then much, much higher. If we break that, then I believe this bear market could take a whole lot longer. But as you guys know, I've been thinking that the bottom of the Bitcoin chart is going to be somewhere in September, October. People say it's September. It hasn't happened. Well, I showed you guys yesterday. It doesn't take long for Bitcoin to have huge drops, right? Capitulation is fast and hard. I do believe we are getting something like that coming. Now, I showed you guys this chart yesterday. This is the monthly. All we're doing is making lower highs and lower lows. I do think there's another lower low coming, in my opinion. Now, before we go any further, we will get into the smaller time frame for Bitcoin. Um, we're going to look at the four-hour chart on PrimeXBT, the sponsor of this channel. Definitely check them out if you haven't already. Like I said, you can trade for free in the contest section on there. And guys, one more thing. Anytime anybody's doing anything on the internet, you should be using a VPN for your security. Uh, it's just another level of security amongst many others you should be taking. But VMP or a VPN, hide your... Um, your location so definitely consider using it if you don't already i do have one in the link down below if you want to use my uh, promo code for pure vpn um, up to you there's huge discounts on there though so if you do want to use it uh, i do recommend definitely using a vpn whether you use the one i'm using or not um, it is definitely a necessity online in my opinion all right so word from the sponsor real quick begin your path to financial freedom gain up to a seven thousand dollar bonus on us register and use promo code deposit and enjoy a seven percent bonus available now link in the description all right guys so that is prime xbt we're going to take a look at the the new feature right now which is let me show you so this is Prime XBT. Remember, guys, if you trade and actually are trading your own funds, then you can use my promo code SAVVY50. That'll get you up to a $7,000 bonus to use towards your margins. SAVVY25 will get you 25% off your fees. Now, what I normally trade on is the global markets here, but a lot of people get confused and don't understand how the margin works. Again, I'm going to be making a video on the newer. If you, if you want to understand how the margins work on the global markets on Prime XBT, just go to my channel. Um, I'll leave a tutorial up top that has it in there and gives you the gist of it. But on this one here, you can change from cross to isolated leverage. So whichever you're comfortable with. I like cross leverage. Um, and on cross leverage, so you can see I'm in the contest section now. If you go up here to the contest section, right, it's the Crypto's Futures Weekly. Now this is the new futures, right? Again, I'm going to be making a video on this in detail how to use it but i'm going to show you right now where i'm at so i put two trades in um a one bitcoin trade and a five bitcoin trade they let they start you off with i think it's six thousand you can win um real money real prizes if you win the contest right i'm not sure what the 
let's take a look at what they are. Uh, there's a thousand dollar in awards. So here's where I'm at right now. I just started it this morning. Uh, there's 438 people in it and I've only had two trades, which is one Bitcoin and a half Bitcoin. And a lot of people ask me about laddering trades. I'm going to show you, uh, just quickly how I laddered in. So, right. I put a few trades in, um, down here right now, the risk or the return on, my trade is 98.04%, right? So I do have more trades lined up. Now, I wanna put another one in too, and I'll show you why here in a minute. But let's look at this as a possible one, two, right? It shouldn't go above the point uh, seven, eight, six. But I will put my stops up here around 26, eight, somewhere in that range. But if it does start going up, I'm gonna continue laddering in, and I'll put one in now. Uh, there you do use the limit order so if it gets up to 27 whoops yeah 27 100 uh, put it on sell so if it hits that 27 100 then i'm getting adding to my shorts now reason i like to use uh the cross leverage is because you can see the unrealized profit Print and loss right here is 236. I can actually use that into going into more trades. So um, you can't do that using isolated leverage. That's one of the reasons I like it. And again, I'll explain all that. But so let's put this order in. I also have an order in at 27,000 for a half a Bitcoin. Here's another one for 27.1. Remember, guys, this is the contest. This doesn't cost anything, and it's a great way to learn the platform to get you a strategy that works before you begin trading real money. So I'm placing the sell order, there it is. And what we'll do, if you wanna put your stops in. Now, what I like to do and how I like to trade, once you're in massive profit, like, okay, we're in shorts. So once we break this low down here, uh, 26,000, I would move my stops down to above the EMAs, which I would be in profit at around 26.6, 26.7. Uh, if we get down to these levels that way even if it moves up and you get stopped out you made money there's so many ways to make money in this market you guys need, gotta find a strategy that works for you one thing i always stress is anyone teaching programs there is no cookie cutter program to trading right none that is a waste of money practice use back testing figure your own strategy out let's get into the four hour so here's another look at the four hour right uh, these let's clean this chart up a little bit so these were our targets that we had over the weekend and we did nail our first one didn't quite get down to our second one let's move these out of the way and look at the bigger picture here right so we crossed back up into this area let's get that out of the way so here's what i talked about yesterday if we cross that 27 150 ish which again, that's our FIB level, right? So if we get above that and hold support, then I will, I will probably be getting out of the short trades. But I don't think we're going to get up that high. I think we're going to come back down, retest this. And I think the next time we pass 26,000 will probably be the last for a long time. Is it guaranteed? Absolutely not. But be cautious, guys. One thing I want to talk about also is the way the markets are going, the amount of debt people have. Let me, before we get into the longer term in our Cardano chart, also going to be looking at our Binance chart, of course, as we always do. But real quick, let's have a talk. So the debt crisis is crazy. People are living on credit cards and stuff right now. It's extremely high. Why would those people buy Bitcoin? Where would they get the money to buy into the stock markets? People are hurting. So when the housing market begins to crash, or interest rates are raising. I've said this for uh, two years. I don't believe this bear market will be over until U.S. mortgage rates are over 10%. I still think that's coming. It's going to be bad. Um, but the opportunity that comes along with that, with the market crash, is absolutely amazing. I think it's going to be probably the buying opportunity of a lifetime. I don't think it's here yet. If you do, buy away. I don't think it's here yet, but I do think it's coming, and I do think it's coming rather soon. Keep up on this channel. We'll be watching it closely. So this is our one 
one count here we have looking at this as a falling wedge a b c d e looking for e as you guys know i'm looking for a 37 to 97 hundred dollar bitcoin actually 35 to 97 um, unless things get really bad could it get worse it's possible but that's what i've been looking at since december 2nd 2021 when we called it over here and told everybody you know it might be a good time to get out uh, those that listened are doing awesome because they didn't lose any money, right? People wanna talk about the 100% rally here, but that 100% rally is just the bear market rally that we expected. I told you once we hit the false bottom, which I believe was the 15.5, expect a 100% rally before continuing to the downside for the true bottom. Now this is one path it can take. Here's another one, uh, being a five wave structure, right? Now, in a, in a five wave structure, wave four cannot retrace past wave one, and that's at 32.9. So, unless it gets above 32.9, this remains intact, in my opinion. Um, yep. It's, here's another look at the daily. So, here is here's for people that don't think it'll get below 10,000, right? So, if this is a rising wedge here, which everything seems to line up pretty good, go to where we broke down. That gets us to about 10.5 to 11,000. Okay, so this is our major, major, major area to watch. I believe once we break 25 again, if that holds as resistance, guys, it's probably going to push down pretty damn hard, so be careful. Now, oh, I didn't even have the charts on, damn it. My bad. Let's go back and look at these two charts real quick. So... I don't even know where I didn't have it on. Man, I apologize. I am not going to redo this whole video. So let's just get into, here's the one count, that L, the ABCDE, right? Looking for that 35 to 9,700. Here is that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Remember, here's wave 1. 4 cannot cross wave 1 or it invalidates this structure. So far, this structure is still validated in a big way. And here's that daily chart right there. This was the rising wedge I was talking about. Um, the measured move of that is about 10.5 to 11,000. But this is the area you need to watch for 25,000. If that breaks and becomes resistance, it's probably going to happen pretty quick after that. ADA. This chart, right? I made this chart two years ago before we broke this right here, right? We were expecting all of this and then throughout the year we came up with the other targets um, and i'm going to show you how i got them right so this target here that 16 or what a penny a penny one penny one and a half that's a measured move from this white trend line here this white trend line here this descending triangle falling wet or yeah falling wedge whatever you want to call it once we broke it over here, that's what got us that target. Now you can look at this yellow one, same thing, right? See the yellow top here? Take a measured move of that. And, you know, we never were able to get back above this trend line, which pretty much tells me that we still have lower to go. This target here, that 22, we had a long time ago. People called me crazy back then too. We almost nailed it. What'd we hit? Uh, obviously nothing's 100% with timing or exact numbers, but I give you guys the ranges to watch for. 23 cents, right? I still think we come test this 22 once that breaks. 19. Um, and then our measured move on the yellow. Uh, best case, 8 cents, somewhere in there. One other thing I want to show you guys. This is the Coinbase chart, so don't go that far back. But if we go to the Binance chart, let's go to this one show you something i always talk about bubbles returning to where they began it began down here look at this high volume node it's around seven and a half cents so like i said around eight cents guys be cautious in these markets be careful who you listen to a lot of these people just make videos um you know and if that's their thing they just want to be youtubers and get a lot of views they're going to tell everybody they can buy anything and get rich they've been telling them that this whole time guys be careful be cautious Love you guys. Make sure to smash those thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. I apologize for the screw up in the video a couple minutes ago, but anyways, is what it is. Make sure you guys check out our sponsor, Prime XBT, in the links down below, and I will see you in the next video. Check out these videos.